Hello! Have you ever been curious about how farmers handle wild boar meat after hunting? Let's explore this journey together! Don't hesitate to leave the number one in the comments if you want to join us! The one who makes the sounds of the wild. The pigs are currently running away from the hunters. So what did they do to deserve being chased like that? Do you know? In America, encountering wild boars wandering along the roadside is quite common. They often appear suddenly in crowded cities, as if their surroundings were their natural habitat. This behavior poses numerous challenges to the surrounding environment. So what is the reason behind the destructive actions of wild boars? Let's follow along to the end of the video to learn that many believe the intrusion of wild boars may stem from their struggles in finding food, forcing them to invade urban areas in search of sustenance. Loss of natural habitat may result from deforestation, climate change, or human intervention, which has prompted them to seek food in urban areas. Their adaptation to this new environment is often attributed to the availability and accessibility of food in urban areas, driven by their survival needs. What do you think? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Of course, Farmers cannot allow the sounder wild boar invasion to continue without taking action. They use traps to catch this sounder wild boar. However, what is worth noting here is that after wild boars were caught in traps, farmers used guns to destroy them. This raises questions about the purpose of this action by farmers. Some people choose to participate directly in the sounder boar hunt, not only for the task but also for the adventure and excitement it brings. They prepare meticulously with the right equipment and weapons and practice their skills to deal with unexpected situations in the wild. This is not just about killing wild boars, but also an opportunity to explore the beauty of wild nature and experience the excitement and tension of chasing prey in harsh environments. Do you like the way Americans handle this? If you like it, leave your number one in the comments. Farmers in the United States must comply with specific regulations regarding the disposal of wild boar carcasses after hunting to support this. Direct contact with local wildlife management agencies helps ensure that wild boar carcasses are disposed of safely and do not cause pollution or spread of disease in the surrounding area.
The Texas area is famous for being one of the epicenters of the invasive feral swine problem. An estimated 2 million wild boars live here, causing millions of dollars in damage to agriculture and the environment each year. The sudden increase in wild boar numbers has created an emergency situation, requiring strong management and control measures from both communities and state governments. According to wildlife management agencies, wild boars are considered a major risk in spreading dangerous diseases to both humans and domestic animals. Among these diseases, African swine fever is a notable threat, with the potential to cause serious consequences for livestock and human health. Furthermore, wild boars can also attack humans, especially when they feel threatened or perceive danger. This creates a potential risk when interacting with them, especially in areas where wild boars feel stressed or uncomfortable. So, how do farmers deal with this situation? If you are in their area, can you spare these wild boars? To solve this situation, many farmers have chosen hunting as an effective control method. Although wild boars are very agile, they cannot escape the pursuit of experienced hunters. Each wild boar is usually taken down within seconds, ensuring safety and minimizing risks to both the community and the agricultural environment. However, in a rapidly evolving agricultural environment like Texas, feral pig control has become necessary to protect community livelihoods and assets. Some residents in Texas have adopted a unique method to fight feral hogs. They used a private plane to conduct the pursuit. takes off, hunters are lifted high, ready to embark on a thrilling hunting expedition right from the start. The scene is undeniably impressive, with chaotic images of wild boars fleeing amidst the frenzy. However, they cannot escape the determined pursuit of the hunters on the ground. It is essential to obtain permission from the regulatory authorities before engaging in any hunting activities to ensure safety and compliance with regulations. cold climates, wild boars develop a thick layer of fur to keep their bodies warm and protect them from the bitter cold. This soft fur provides warmth and is part of an effective insulation system that helps them survive in harsh weather conditions. However, this thick layer of fur poses significant challenges for professional hunters. They are faced with tracking and hunting wild boar in snow-covered environments, where finding and reaching targets is more difficult than ever.
In Texas, residents not only stop at hunting wild pigs, but also choose to domesticate and raise them on farms. However, this is not easy because of the wild and ferocious nature of wild boars. Taming them requires patience, special skills, and safety measures to handle unexpected situations effectively. When wild boars reach adulthood, they are often carefully processed and then sold to the market. Wild boar meat is then used to cook and prepare many delicious and attractive dishes from frying and grilling to roasting and stir-frying soup. Many creative and attractive dishes are made from wild boar meat depending on each person's preferences and cooking style. Would you like to try wild boar meat if you have the chance? Welcome to Canada, a majestic country famous for its beautiful natural landscapes spread over a total area of 9,984,670 square kilometers. But as beautiful as it is, it's incredible to look at what Canadians face every day. Wild pests appear around urban areas, not just attacking people. It also causes unpredictable damage to trash cans and the surrounding environment. This intrusion caused farmers in the area to face unrelenting anger and anxiety. Their town where farmers lived, did not wish for the intrusion of wild wars to continue. Therefore, they decided to implement hunting measures to control the presence of wild boars. It is worth noting that these measures are completely legal and even encouraged, seen as a kind of game to prevent the spread of Canadian super pigs. Conditions to participate are simple. Just make sure you are old enough and have a hunting license. Then you can participate in this activity completely legally. However, if you do not support this method, please share another method that can effectively catch an entire herd of wild pigs without having to spend a lot of time and effort hunting them in the wild. One of those methods is using cage traps. Cage traps are specially designed with an opening in the trap door and use food as bait to deceive feral pigs. When they enter the trap to eat the bait, the trap door automatically closes, effectively capturing the entire herd. This design not only improves the efficiency of catching forest worms, but also minimizes the risk of their detection and avoidance. Where did these wild boar herds come from? Let's continue to explore wild boar that are mainly native to areas such as Asia, Europe, and North Africa where wild forms of pigs have been domesticated and bred. For thousands of years, do you know when wild emerald ash borers were imported into Canada? In the late 1980s, 
Wild emerald borers were introduced from Europe to Canada with the purpose of diversifying genetic resources in livestock farming. Some individuals brought wild emerald borers to Canada as game species. After a while, small populations of these feral pigs multiply and spread very quickly making them one of the most invasive mammal species in Canada. Canada boasts diverse forest areas, including mixed forest and prairie cover. About 14% of the land area is typically flat lowland used for agriculture and livestock, which facilitates beneficial for many different wildlife species, including wild emerald ash borers. Wild emerald borer species have been identified in all 10 Canadian provinces and three territories, showing a high degree of adaptability to a diverse range of habitats. The adaptation of wild boars to harsh environments is shown by the fact that they equip themselves with thick, dense fur in winter. This fur not only keeps the body warm on cold days, but also creates a solid layer of protection against cold wind and falling snow. This adaptability helps wild boars become more flexible in finding food and moving through different, challenging environments. Wild boar populations are growing steadily and exhibiting remarkable independence in Canada's rich food environment. The adaptive characteristics of wild boars are not only a sign of adaptation to diverse habitats, but also an improvement in their survival ability and expansion of their living range in this area. You already know that, in addition to causing damage to agriculture, wild boar herds also create other major problems for communities, frequently entering farmers' fields. They gnaw on corn plants and cause unpredictable losses each crop. But what is more remarkable? Aggression is caused not only by a few individuals, but also by the participation of the whole herd every year. The activities of wild boar herds cause billions of dollars in damage to crops, affecting not only the economy, but also threatening the economic and ecological balance in the region. Rewinding time, we can see that Canada is famous for its temperate climate creating favorable conditions for agricultural corn that has become the top choice of farmers. The main reason behind this preference is not only the short harvest time but also the simple care requirements and reasonable market price that corn has given you all the effort to take care of the field, but now the pigs the forest invades and destroys everything. Will you forgive them? Keep watching until the end of the video to see how this battle plays out. You know what animal scares wild boars? It's none other than these extremely aggressive hunting dogs. When they identify a target, they show determination to take down the boars. Some farmers have tried to put up fences to keep out wild pigs, but without looking here you can see that wild stem borers have the flexibility to sneak over and easily escape the fence making it ineffective. Result of their intelligence.
The most effective way to deal with the wild boar problem seems to be to use hunting methods. Before starting the hunt, the most important thing is to prepare thoroughly. Make sure you are equipped with a suitable and powerful hunting rifle to face the wild pigs. Checking gun ammunition and related accessories carefully before starting is an important step that cannot be overlooked. In addition, choosing clothes that are odor resistant and have colors suitable for the forest environment is also necessary. Finally, don't forget to bring the necessary documents and hunting license to ensure you have a perfect day of hunting and no legal problems. A feast with a menu of delicious wild boar meat will be an experience not to be missed after a day of hunting. Do you want to try hunting? Hunting wild pigs is not only an entertaining experience but also opens up the opportunity to enjoy a unique type of meat with a characteristic delicious flavor. Meat preparation methods can vary from grilling and roasting to marinating in soy sauce to enhance the natural flavor. However, not everyone appreciates wild pork, with only a few enjoying it. Healthy grazing land. There is an ongoing issue of competition for grazing land between wild horse advocates and farmers. Conflicts arising from the depletion of resources, especially fodder, due to the increasing number of wild horses. Before the appearance of wild horses, Cattle grazed freely on grasslands, providing farmers with plenty of grazing land. However, the presence of wild horses has led to significant challenges for farmers. Wild horses are resourceful and adaptable, capable of hunting for food, so they pose a threat to other species in the environment. Impacts include destruction of grazing land, consumption of stored hay for livestock and uprooting of grass and tree roots, leading to desolate landscapes. Farmers in states such as New Mexico have reported difficulties raising livestock as wild horses have eaten up stored hay, forcing them to travel long distances in search of pristine pastures. This competition for resources creates water shortages, affects irrigation for neighboring farms, and hinders grassland regeneration. Controlling wild horse populations is a complex problem and there is no easy solution. Various methods have been tested, including injecting birth control pills directly into wild horses, but the impact remains limited. Chasing is considered a minimally invasive method of preventing wild horses from taking away livestock feed 
and controlling their populations. Opinions on how to handle wild horses remain controversial. Some people advocate keeping them in breeding facilities, while others advocate allowing them to roam freely, demonstrating a connection to the spirit of nature and freedom of the past. Despite the cultural significance of wild horses, the growing population poses challenges in maintaining a healthy balance in the ecosystem, and the U.S. Bureau of Land Management estimates that the current population has exceeded beyond sustainability. The ongoing debate highlights the need for sustainable management measures to address competing interests in wild horse conservation and agricultural needs. invasive species in the United States. Wild horses are a serious problem, and many measures have been taken to control their population. However, according to a 2022 report in the Journal of Wildlife Management, there are about 300,000 wild horses roaming freely across areas, including tribal territories and states. Contraceptives are a good solution to prevent the rapid increase of the wild horse population. However, this is not the only solution and requires the coordination of many different measures to ensure balance in the ecosystem. Wild horses have gone through a journey from mythology to the fascination of farmers today. Their appearance and impact is a typical example of the complex situation that humans face when changing the natural environment. Maintaining the balance between the environment and humans poses many challenges, and controlling the wild horse population is a comprehensive solution to protect the environment and farmers.
the feeling of horror and anxiety before the appearance of red foxes is not only an obsession of Australian farmers, but also a tragic reality when it comes to the sheep farming industry. Sheep farming is a traditional and important profession of Australian agriculture, contributing significantly to the national economy. Australian sheep are not only raised for wool and meat, but are also an important cultural and economic symbol of the country. However, the threat from the red fox has caused major upheavals and raised deep anxiety in the farming community. Images of thousands of sheep being destroyed overnight by the appearance of red foxes have highlighted the risks and challenges facing the sheep farming industry. With wounds bleeding and losses, both economically and spiritually. Australian farmers not only worry about the safety of their sheep, but also fear for the stability and sustainability of this traditional livestock industry. The Red Fox invasion not only causes significant financial losses, but also poses a serious threat to Australia's economy, impacting hundreds of millions of dollars. The cause of this phenomenon can be explained by the natural behavior of red foxes when they often enter areas in search of food, especially when food sources become scarce. Territorial encroachment often occurs in overlapping habitats, where red foxes compete with each other for resources and social status. This often leads to conflicts and territorial disputes, especially during mating season, when fox behavior can change according to the environment. Aware of the fox's cunning and agility, Australian farmers chose hunting as the ideal method to prevent invasion and control red fox populations. Although the red fox's growth rate is very fast, with agility and cunning, hunters have created an effective solution. If you agree with this approach, leave it as a 1. Otherwise, leave it as a 0. And if you want to try red fox meat, it can be a unique and nutritious culinary experience. However, it should be noted that red fox meat consumption is only common in certain population groups in Australia, and not everyone accepts it into their diet. Foxes are a common predator in Germany, especially in agriculture. 
where their agility is demonstrated by their hunting techniques and complex social lifestyle. Fox families often build elaborate dens, and they can live alone or in groups. In recent years, the number of fox invasions in Germany has increased significantly, reaching hundreds of thousands of foxes each year, causing heavy damage to the national economy amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars. Foxes have become one of the most invasive species in Germany over the past decade, with their numbers doubling from 300 to 600,000. They often attack poultry farms at night, especially in areas they identify as their land with chickens with weak eyesight often being their main targets. Foxes often hide in the suburbs before carrying out attacks, and their attacks in broad daylight cause victims to panic and flee. The significant increase in the number of foxes and their boldness in attacking poultry flocks has created a situation of great concern among the farming community in Germany. German residents have used snap traps to control fox populations since the 19th century. The traps are placed strategically in fox-rich areas, such as near barns or pastures. They are designed to activate quickly when a fox enters, ensuring effective capture. This method has helped reduce the number of foxes captured annually by about 20% over the past two decades, equivalent to about 20,000 foxes caught in traps each year in Germany. Do you like this approach? If yes, leave a comment with number 1, and if not, leave a comment with number 0. To increase the effectiveness of traps, they need to be set approximately two to three times per week, but require attention and compliance with safety guidelines. Traps should be placed in safe locations and out of reach of children and pets. Foxes are able to breed year-round, but the mating period usually occurs in spring and summer. A litter of foxes usually has four to six cubs, but this number can vary depending on environmental conditions and food sources. With a total of four common fox species in Germany, the red fox is often the one that causes the most problems, especially when entering and attacking farms. 
Most of them are widely distributed across a variety of environments, including grassland forests and red fox settlements, demonstrating the ability to adapt flexibly to a variety of habitats. As can be easily observed as they roam the suburbs looking for food. Their rapid reproduction has led to a significant increase. The number of foxes with a growth rate 10% higher than other fox species, with the ability to proficiently hunt red foxes, contributes up to 15% of the national economy. However, in Australia, they pose significant challenges to the farming community. Red foxes often invade farms to attack and steal other animals to meet their nutritional needs. The rapid increase in red fox populations not only damages the economy, but also negatively impacts the ecosystem. In just one night, many chickens on the farm were killed. So, what was the cause? Foxes invaded and attacked the farm. Do you know the reason why foxes invaded and attacked the farm? Can be explained through a variety of factors. Loss of natural habitat negative impacts from human activities, and a sudden increase in fox numbers. Contributing to the scarcity of food sources forcing them must search for resources in urban areas and even infiltrate farms to meet their nutritional needs. <laughs> to prevent fox invasion, some people choose to use traditional methods such as traps. The main advantage of this method is the ability to capture live foxes, which benefits the control and management of fox populations in the area. Do you know where these captured foxes were taken afterwards? Please share with me. The use of traditional trapping methods has proven effective in controlling fox populations. However, they are not a perfect solution and face a number of challenging issues. Issues associated with the use of traps include the risk of accidentally catching other animals such as dogs, cats, or rabbits, creating safety concerns, and unwanted effects on other wildlife. In Germany, farmers also used hunting as a means of controlling foxes. Hunting activities are strictly governed by federal hunting laws. Only individuals with a valid hunting license are allowed to participate, especially at night, when foxes are usually active to hunt. Hunters need to be fully equipped with the necessary tools and understand the hunting area. Careful preparation and an in-depth understanding of the hunting environment are extremely important to ensure effective and safe control of fox populations.
The uncontrolled proliferation of carp in Australia has attracted attention, as they are involved in wastewater treatment by consuming algae. But unfortunately, a significant number of carp have escaped measures control. Escaped carp create a serious problem in Australia as they invade lakes and ponds, having a major impact on the local environment. The overpresence of carp poses a major challenge to the ecosystem, requiring balance and diversity in other fish management measures to control sudden increases in carp populations and conserve and protect freshwater ecosystems. are often of considerable size, with flattened bodies and fan-like tails. In addition, they are also known for their ability to adapt to many different water environments, from freshwater to brackish water. The carp's aggressiveness is also notable, and they can sometimes become overcrowded when spreading in new environments. To deal with a carp invasion, farmers have adopted an effective method of fishing using electricity. Sailors move in boats through waterways, creating a simulated electric field, which causes an electric shock to fish underwater. This electric shock disrupts the carp's ability to move, immobilizing them and causing them to float to the surface, making it easier for farmers to remove them. This method not only minimizes the invasive impact of carp on freshwater ecosystems, but also provides an effective opportunity to control and reduce fish populations in the environment. of invasive carp for food production may be a solution to reduce pressure on wild fish stocks. In Australia, invasive carp are generally considered a nuisance species and should not be considered a nuisance, widely accepted as a culinary choice. However, wider acceptance of the culinary use of invasive carp could reduce pressure on wild fish stocks and open up more sustainable opportunities in food production. Do you find this approach reasonable? If you agree, please leave a comment with number one, otherwise leave number zero. The traditional form of bow and arrow fishing for invasive carp is a stimulating experience and requires a high level of skill and proficiency on the part of the angler. When a fish appears near shore or underwater, the angler must concentrate and quickly release the arrow with power and precision. The string attached to the arrow 
helps the angler control the strength of the fish, and the experience is not only about dexterity and technical precision, but also about the excitement of challenging and fighting with fish full of strength. It is a challenge that anglers find exciting when they face the fish in their own field. Tasmanian Devils here provide a colorful and diverse picture of wildlife. The Tasmanian Devil, one of the most ferocious creatures on the planet, primarily preys on small prey such as birds, reptiles, and insects to stay alive. What is special about them is the strong and unpleasant smell from their scent glands, which is a sign of strength and territorial dominance. The Tasmanian Devil's running ability is incredible. With speeds of up to 12 meters per hour, they are creatures that can hunt continuously for long periods of time. However, since 1941, the Australian government has recognized the importance of protecting Tasmanian Devils and preventing their population growth. Placing the Tasmanian Devil in a wildlife sanctuary is not only a protection measure for this species, but also a way to maintain natural balance and protect the ecosystem. This policy not only helps limit the invasion of Tasmanian Devils, but also protects their existence in the natural environment. What do you think about this method? Please share your opinion about this approach and the importance of protecting wildlife. Although there are still many unanswered questions, continue watching the video for now to better understand why wild boars, although believed to have arrived from Europe in the 16th century, have become such a threat, greatest economic and environmental threat in the United States, especially the feral swine population in North Carolina. The significant growth of feral swine populations in North Carolina poses a unique challenge for communities and state governments, primarily at the hands of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, known as USFWS. It is expected that by 2024, the number of wild pigs in North Carolina will reach about 2 million, accounting for 10% of the total population. This makes the state one of the largest wild boar populations in the entire United States. The sudden growth of wild boar populations not only creates a strong livestock market, but also has a significant impact on the environment. The economic and environmental consequences for the state were significant, including the destruction of trees, crops, and other property creating an emergency requiring drastic community intervention. Detailed data shows that North Carolina not only ranks first in fog counts, but is also one of the state's hardest hit by the negative impacts of feral hog populations. 
This concerns not only the large numbers but also the significant consequences and negative impacts they cause. Wild boar populations not only spread to many different areas, but also carry the risk of destroying the environment and threatening community health. Wild pigs can be a source of dangerous infectious diseases for humans and livestock, creating a medical emergency that residents of North Carolina are facing with significant negative consequences. The application of strong countermeasures such as trapping and hunting has become the main solution to control and reduce feral pig populations. These measures are not only restraining but also an important step to protect the living environment and ensure security for society. Now, let's talk about the new people in North Carolina who are facing the challenge of handling these feral hogs, especially farmers. They had to come up with some real tricks in using different types of traps, from quick traps to hook traps and even fog traps. All of these efforts are aimed not only at capturing wild boars, but also at ensuring that all operations take place efficiently and safely. These strategies are not only an important step forward in controlling feral pig populations, but they are also exciting and attractive in the process. First, the farmers searched for the ideal location, where there were many footprints of wild pigs. Then, they cleverly set traps in locations where the pigs often congregate. Like on a waiting stage, a group of farmers mixed a little bait, be it potatoes, corn, or even delicious berries to surprise and delight the wild pigs when the trap was set and the bait arrived while playing the waiting game. In this game, farmers return regularly to check their traps, making sure everything is going smoothly and that the pigs are taking the bait. This is a picture like a small dance between farmers and wild pigs where everything happens stealthily, but very effectively. Now, let's talk about positive numbers. At the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, feral swine numbers in North Carolina dropped about 20% in 2023 compared to the previous year. And that downward trend is continuing here. in the North Carolina hog hunt. Hunting season is an amazing experience. There are two main ways to participate. First of all, there is the seasonal hunt, which begins on October 1st and ends on December 31st. During this period, you are free to pursue wild pigs with various types of hunting equipment, such as bows and arrows names or even modern hunting tools for those who want to hunt year-round there is the option of licensed hunting although it lasts all year you need a hunting license from the state which costs 25 dollars per year image of farmers and hunters working together to solve the problem of wild pigs Farmers provide detailed information about where wild pigs often appear, allowing hunters to learn and experiment with tracking. This is truly an engaging and enjoyable team collaboration.
According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, pig populations are on track to decline by about 20% by 2023. This is not just about keeping a pig in captivity for entertainment. It also helps protect the environment and maintain clean the roads. In addition, it also brings more economic benefits to the community, especially to farmers. Therefore, these solutions have been applied effectively to prevent the development. Among the measures to control colonization of some invasive species, do you believe in any other solutions? If so, please share your comments and opinions below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to support our channel with upcoming videos. Finally, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so they can watch and enjoy it too. The absence of natural predators, such as gray wolves, coupled with abundant food sources, has led to a rapid proliferation of wild boars. Their high adaptability and fast reproductive rate have turned them into aggressive invaders, causing $22 million in damages to the agriculture industry in Italy annually. If you want to know how Italian farmers tackle this invasive species, please leave the number one below in the comments section. The increasing presence of wild boars is not only confined to rural areas, but also extends to urban areas. They intelligently utilize waste and food from humans, creating a potential hazard to the safety and health of the community. Wild boars pose a threat to traffic in Italy. When they cross roads in long lines, they cause traffic jams. In cases like this, when motorcyclists are traveling on the highway, wild boars running across the road have caused accidents, resulting in injuries and vehicle damage. They often cause damage to crops by consuming grass seeds and other cultivated plants, resulting in significant losses for agriculture. Moreover, wild boars also inflict harm on livestock herds, especially piglets. In December 2022, the government of Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney issued an order to cull wild boars in Rome. However, this decision faced strong opposition from animal rights activists. Hunters were permitted to use bows to kill wild boars and harvest their meat. Moreover, hunting wild boars was permitted even in areas where hunting is typically prohibited. 
such as urban areas and conservation areas. In July 2023, Mayor Nicola Fiorita of Catanzaro also authorized the culling of 30 roaming wild boars in a park within the city. effort to protect farms and prevent damage caused by wild boars. Farmers are often willing to collaborate with hunters. They provide information about the activities and locations of wild boars, helping hunting groups effectively identify their targets. With their hunting skills and understanding of wild boar behavior, hunters play a crucial role in controlling and reducing the population of this species. The use of bows is one of the common methods that hunters employ to eliminate wild boars. allow them to access remote forested areas without creating loud noises, giving them the opportunity to approach and accurately shoot wild boars without causing disturbance. Do you enjoy hunting with bows like this? Do you know where these wild boars come from? Wild boars, originally from Southeast Asia arrived in Europe about 5 million years ago and became a favorite food source for many civilizations. Living in herds, they have strong bonds with sows and piglets. In the early 20th century, wild boars were nearly extinct due to deforestation and the expansion of agriculture. However, after World War II, Italy's economy developed, forests began to recover, providing conditions for wild boars to thrive once again. Hunting wild boars is a crucial strategy used to control their population in Italy. Hunting activities take place throughout the year, but adhere to government regulations. There are two main types of hunting carried out in Italy. The first type is seasonal hunting, typically occurring from September to December, when wild boars are most active. This allows hunters to use various methods such as hunting tools and traps to manage the wild boar population. The second type is government-planned hunting activities, which occur in areas where wild boars cause the most damage. Have you ever tried hunting from a boat? This is truly a unique opening method. Creates an exceptional hunting experience, causing the wild boar's natural wariness to drop in a serene atmosphere. They do not sense potential danger, and each wild boar seems unable to resist as they fall to the ground, oblivious to the punishment these wild pigs must have faced.
hunters in Italy can kill about 295,000 wild boars annually. But the reality is that wild boars reproduce at a faster rate. Zoologist Andrea Monaco, who has studied wild boars for more than 20 years at the Italian Institute for Environmental Protection and Research ISPRA, in Rome, said that each year, wild boar populations can increase by 150%. A helicopter wild boar hunting adventure is not only an exciting experience but also a fascinating challenge. Hunters will experience dramatic moments when searching for wild boars from above, then using hunting tools to take them down in compliance with the law. Ensure effectiveness when taking down wild boars. Hunters often choose when they are moving or feeding in open areas will help them more easily reach their targets. Every year, hundreds of thousands to several million wild boars are hunted, creating a significant challenge for hunters. When a target is detected, the hunter will immediately notify the pilot, and both will fly together to the animal's location. From there, Hunters will target and use hunting tools to take down targets, especially wild boars. The method is usually performed by taking down from the back of the head or neck, ensuring the process is quick and effective. The average visual range of a helicopter when hunting is 750 feet, which is enough for the hunter to be able to hit the target. However, Advanced hunting devices can operate in ranges of 1,000 feet, expanding the possibilities of hunting in a variety of locations. So how do you like to participate in the hunt? If you want to experience the hunt, leave number two. If you like the thrill of hunting on a plane, don't hesitate to leave number 3 in the comments section below. However, their dominance is not always unchallenged, especially when they encounter fierce hunting dogs in this confrontation. Hunting dogs often demonstrate their determination and hunting skills they can chase and capture wild boars, forcing them to flee for their lives. So, in your opinion, who will win in the showdown between hunting dogs and wild boars? Ferocious hunting dogs are often formidable opponents of wild boars. However, it should be noted that many wild pig species have adapted to harsh weather conditions, including snow-covered areas, by developing a thick layer of fur that retains heat and shields them from the cold, freezing. The wild boar's dense fur not only helps them avoid getting wet when walking through deep snow, but also creates a unique visibility. Besides,
Their ability to dig deep makes it possible for them to penetrate many different locations, even military areas. The competition between hunting dogs and wild boars becomes fascinating, as packs of ferocious hunting dogs are not only strong opponents but also a significant threat to forest boars. They have to run away to protect their lives. This confrontation brings tension and drama, making hunting more exciting. During the wild boar hunting journey, training hunting dogs plays an important role to ensure effectiveness and safety of the hunt. Training hunting dogs to handle wild boars requires patience, skill, and a deep understanding of both animals. First of all, choosing a dog to train is very important. Breeds with good tracking and searching abilities are preferred, such as wolfhounds, beagles, or bloodhounds. These dogs often have good noses and the ability to run fast, helping them easily find scent trails and track wild boars. The training process begins with educating the dog about the smell of wild boar and how to track it. Dogs are placed in a simulated environment and trained to recognize and track the scent of wild boar through the use of scent patterns and special training techniques. Next, dogs are trained to learn how to track and signal the presence of wild boars. These techniques include recognizing the sounds, tracks and other markings of wild boars, and learning to signal to guides when they spot a target. Finally, the dog is trained to cooperate with the guide during the hunt. They must learn to follow instructions and work as a team of the guide to ensure the hunt takes place safely and effectively. In short, training hunting dogs so they can hunt wild boar requires hard work and patience from both the trainer and the dogs themselves. But with the right technique and dedication, they can be reliable partners in wild boar hunting. However, before applying hunting methods, Italian farmers often take initial measures, such as planting plants that are not attractive to wild boars, building sturdy fences and choosing fruit and vegetable crops, suitable tubers. However, these measures are often not effective enough to control wild boar populations. In addition to hunting, farmers and hunters also use traps to catch wild boars. Trapping usually takes place during the day when they are less active, especially at night when wild boars are most active. When captured wild boars are detected, they will be harvested and eliminated. This process extends from rural areas to urban areas, helping to protect farmers' vegetation and property from destruction by wild boars.
What do you think about the measures farmers are taking to protect their farms and the environment? Leave number 8 in the comments if you find it interesting, and ask us questions to discuss this issue further in upcoming videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on other interesting content. Thank you for accompanying us. Banting Cattle A wild symbol of Southeast Asia have shined around the world with their wild instincts and unique beauty. Let's explore the impressive journey of this cow, from its origins in Southeast Asia to its new life in Australia. Originating in the vast forests and green grasslands of Southeast Asia, the banting prefers diverse habitats, from lowlands to open forests. They'd often form herds of 5 to 20 individuals, creating a cohesive and mingling community. The reproductive cycle lasts about 9 months, and baby banting cows are carefully raised by their parents during their early stages of life. Banting cows are famous for their gentleness, in stark contrast to their large appearance and strength. However, their wild instincts push them to move, explore and sometimes enter residential areas, causing damage to vegetable gardens and farms. In Australia, where banting cattle have adapted to live in the wild, herd management has become an urgent issue. Australian farmers have creatively applied measures to minimize damage and protect the environment. Fences were built to prevent banting cows from accessing livestock and pastures, and a herd management strategy was implemented to control numbers and ensure the health of both cows and humans. Furthermore, the use of banting beef and the development of ecotourism provide new sources of income for the community, contributing to sustainable development. support this innovative banting cattle management method. Please leave your vote. Please leave number 1 if you support. Otherwise, leave number 0 below the comment section. Let's join hands to protect the environment and promote sustainable development to create a bright future for both people and Banting, the impressive wild visitors from Southeast Asia.
Hello my friend! Welcome back to the important mission of controlling wild boars to reduce crop damage for farmers in the United States and Canada. Remember that these skilled hunters are authorized to use firearms for hunting. So please adhere to the laws set by your country and state. If you are ready, please leave number one below in the comments section. If you think wild boar hunters are ruthless, consider the consequences they have caused. According to USDA data, the United States corn yield in 2022 was approximately 394 million tons. However, wild boars have inflicted damage of up to 10%. Each year, they ravage crops and cause significant losses, estimated at $5.1 million in the US and around $3.1 million in Canada. Wild boars in the United States, commonly known as European wild boars Suscrofa, are remarkable wild animals in terms of size and weight. They have a length ranging from 1.2 to 2.1 meters and a shoulder height from 60 to 95 centimeter, with an average weight ranging from 50 to 200 kilogram. However, some individuals can weigh over 300 kilogram depending on environmental conditions and nutrition. Wild boars have coarse and thick fur, with colors varying from brown and black to mixed shades. They are omnivores, consuming a variety of foods such as grains, grass, fruits, and even small animals. Particularly noteworthy is their strong reproductive capability, a crucial characteristic of wild boars, with the ability to give birth to multiple offspring in a year. They can pose a significant threat, capable of causing harm to five adults simultaneously. Therefore, caution is advised when encountering them, and it is recommended to avoid areas where wild boars are known to frequent. For small herds of wild boars, farmers can use a net for trapping just like this. However, if dealing with larger sized wild boars, the trap needs to be more secure, as you can see in the previous section of the video. Wild boars often choose to live near water sources because water plays a crucial role in their survival and reproduction. Water sources not only provide vital drinking water, but also create favorable conditions for breeding and caring for their young. Areas near water also offer protective advantages, as wild boars can use water as a means to evade predators. Additionally, aquatic environments are typically diverse, offering plentiful food sources and hunting opportunities, allowing wild boars to adapt flexibly to their surroundings. Leveraging this understanding, hunters often seek wild boars in marshes, water holes, and along riverbanks. Before the start of a new hunting season, farmers collaborate with hunters to locate the lairs of wild boars for hunting. This significantly minimizes the damage to crops. However, it's only a reduction. 
as it's challenging to completely eradicate these wild boars. Due to the abundance of prey, hunters can comfortably choose the best meal for themselves, often opting for newly grown wild boars with tender and flavorful meat. This helps reduce the cost of food for people over time. Wild boars, smart in survival strategies, often prefer to be active at night. This behavior not only helps them avoid high temperatures and glaring sunlight, but also provides safety by avoiding predators. Additionally, feeding at night not only helps them conserve energy from food more efficiently, but also allows them to take advantage of the diverse and unique environment during the nighttime. This habit is a subtle expression of adaptation and flexibility in natural life. However, no matter how wise they are, wild boars cannot escape the keenness of hunters and farmers. Next, we will explore the world of elephants, large, intelligent, and surprising animals. If you are excited about these elephants, please leave number 2 below in the comments section. Elephants, the largest land mammals weighing up to 6 tons, are remarkably fascinating creatures. Their most distinctive feature is their long and flexible trunk, which serves not only for feeding, but also for bathing and even greeting one another within the herd. Apart from their impressive size, elephants are known for their intelligence and ability to communicate with each other through sounds and gestures. They often live in herds, with the oldest female elephant leading and guiding the herd's activities. As herbivores, elephants primarily feed on leaves, fruits, and grass. The variety in their diet helps them maintain their health and energy, allowing them to thrive in diverse and challenging natural environments. Elephants one of the mammals with one of the longest gestation periods last up to 22 months. After giving birth, female elephants invest a considerable amount of time caring for and protecting their calves, which can extend for several years. They are also known as omnivores, capable of consuming various types of food, including fruits and vegetables. With their strong nature and large body, they often show aggression and can attack other animals as an exciting form of entertainment. Not satisfied with their playful instincts, 
This herd of elephants often amuses themselves by running onto roads, causing traffic jams and inconveniences for humans. This animal shows more daring when not only limited to teasing, but also dares to attack cars on the road. Oh no! Unforeseen! The elephants recklessly crossed all limits, directly attacking people's houses, causing significant damage and causing a stir in the community. The dangerous threat from these animals becomes bolder as they attack and threaten passersby, causing people to fear and panic in their attempts to escape. To prevent the danger from ferocious elephants, the people made a strong decision by summoning top hunters. With sophisticated hunting techniques and high precision, this group of hunters took down elephants in just a moment. How do you feel about how people deal with rampaging elephants attacking the city? Please share your opinion with us by leaving a comment below. Wild monkeys often attack and destroy crops, causing damage to agricultural production. Wild monkeys can be a source of dangerous diseases for humans such as Zika virus, dengue fever and rabies. They often attack and scratch people, causing the risk of injury and infection. The presence of monkey feces can cause environmental and water pollution, threatening the health of the community. Wild monkeys can become aggressive and attack humans, especially children. They can cause traffic accidents when appearing on the street. Monkeys can also damage public equipment and pose a danger to people using it. It even boldly jumped up to block the car's front. To control the increasing number of wild monkeys, the U.S. government allows the use of controlled hunting methods. This activity is carried out by licensed hunters and is subject to strict regulations. They use common hunting equipment such as guns, traps and nets. They even use fruits to lure them. Use ripe fruit or other attractive food strategically placed to create an attractive lure. When monkeys approach and try to get food, they will seize the opportunity to catch the monkey. Guns used to hunt monkeys are usually rifles or shotguns, often used with lead bullets or tranquilizer bullets. The hunter will hide and wait for the monkey to appear. When monkeys come close, they will shoot in the head or chest to take down their prey. Hunters are licensed people who know how to use guns and must be knowledgeable about monkey behavior and also need to be able to handle situations, dangerous situations, and comply with safety regulations. In addition, they use more humane methods with monkeys by using live traps, using cage traps or clamp traps to capture monkeys alive. Traps are placed in areas where monkeys often visit. Wait when the monkey gets caught in the trap. The hunter will come to handle it. Ripe fruits are used as bait to attract monkeys into traps or target areas. Usually the fruits that monkeys like are bananas, mangoes, and papayas. 
The use of this fruit enhances the effectiveness of traps and reduces the risk of injury to monkeys. Catching monkeys with traps requires patience and skill. With the aim of not causing harm to the animal, and at the same time ensuring the safe collection of data or carrying out necessary measures. Catching monkeys using net traps is a delicate process and requires thoroughness. First, a net system was established tightly and hidden, so as not to arouse suspicion among the monkeys. Nets are often placed in places where monkeys often appear or pass by. Use ripe fruit or other attractive food placed strategically on the net, creating an attractive lure. When monkeys approach and try to get food, the net will quickly and effectively close. Catching monkeys using net traps requires patience and skill. With the aim of not causing harm to the animal and at the same time ensuring the safe collection of data or carrying out necessary measures. The controversy surrounding wild monkey hunting always arises with two opposing views. Some people believe that this operation is cruel and unnecessary, while the U.S. government asserts that this is a measure to protect people's health, property, and safety. The wild monkey population is not only an issue confined to a specific area, but is also the collective responsibility of the entire community. Safeguarding our shared habitat and ensuring social well-being are crucial goals. Have you ever encountered a wild monkey before? If so, what measures have you taken to address this situation? Please share your opinions and experiences to collaboratively explore appropriate solutions. Let's create a balance between humans and wild monkeys allowing all living beings to coexist harmoniously in the same habitat. The bighorn sheep population is increasing rapidly due to high fertility, leading to a shortage of food and living space. This threatens the economic stability of farmers as they attack fields, destroying crops and stockpiles, as well as causing danger to traffic participants when appearing on the highway, causing traffic congestion and unnecessary accidents. They even attack this car by ramming it directly into the front of the car. Bighorn sheep hunting is becoming an important solution to control encroachment and protect people's livelihoods in the U.S. Therefore, licensing bighorn sheep hunting to farmers is necessary to control number and protect their assets. However, to do this job, hunters need special skills and experience to approach and take down bighorn sheep in rugged, mountainous environments. Hunting needs to be done in a planned and responsible manner, avoiding affecting the genetic diversity of the population and ensuring the safety of both hunters and surrounding people. However, 
Hunting bighorn sheep also poses many challenges, including high adaptability to mountainous environments and the risk of using firearms in residential areas. To address these challenges, it is necessary to improve the skills and knowledge of hunters, coordinate between authorities and local communities, as well as research and apply other control methods such as sterilization to move. Bighorn lamb is not only a popular dish loved by many people, but is also unique with its rich flavor. Combining the deliciousness of beef with its characteristic softness and sweetness. In addition, bighorn lamb is a source of high quality protein, providing essential vitamins that support brain and nervous system function. If you want to discover a unique and flavorful culinary experience, there's nothing stopping you from enjoying a juicy piece of bighorn lamb. This is definitely an opportunity to discover new flavors and enjoy the characteristic aroma of this meat. The constant invasion of snow geese into cities and farms is a worrying problem, and people are trying to find solutions to stop it. Snow geese freely swim and roam around the lakeshore area, polluting the water source. The dog is bigger, but it is not afraid to attack, even making the dog afraid and run away. These big cows may seem aggressive, but the snow geese don't seem to be scared either. They fly in flocks to invade different fields. In many places, they were exterminated by farmers. Snow geese in the Americas often choose to live in the northern part of the continent, especially in the tundra regions of Alaska, Canada, and the northern United States. They make long migrations from warm lands in the summer to cold lands in the winter in search of food. Texas, Louisiana, and Florida are among the final destinations of their migration. Among the migratory geese, a few attack the city. The cause may stem from changes in the living environment, the scarcity of natural food sources, and the comfort of urban spaces compared to the natural environment. They are animals that reproduce rapidly at an exponential rate and are difficult to control. However, there are quite a few issues when these geese inhabit the streets, especially when they are breeding. It can be particularly dangerous when they are raising their young. For example, this pair of snow geese is willing to threaten passersby to protect their young. In the United States and Canada, hunting regulations are often managed and controlled at the state level. Each state may set unique rules and regulations regarding hunting. In many cases, having a hunting license and complying with specific state regulations is required. Factors such as hunting license, hunting season, types of animals that can be hunted and especially safety when hunting are the basic principles that need to be paid attention to. To 
attract the attention of wild geese flying in the sky and call them to swoop down on the fields. Hunters often use special tricks. Using artificial bait is one of the important ways to create attraction. current method of controlling wild goose invasions of farms and cities is through hunting. Farmers became excellent hunters, protecting their land. Join us for exciting hunts. Remember that you must have a license and follow the regulations if you want to participate. And always respect the laws of your country. In recent years, Japan has been witnessing a storm of wild boars spreading everywhere. From deep forests to vibrant entertainment areas, this is not just a simple problem of animal invasion, but also an unexpected challenge for the whole community. Wild boars suddenly attack people, especially when they are skiing, causing dangerous and unpredictable accidents. Wild boars often appear not only in peri-urban areas but also invade residential areas, causing serious problems such as destroying crops and damaging streets. If you want to know how to solve the wild boar problem in Japan, please leave number one below in the comments section. The main cause of this problem is population aging, leading to many rural areas being abandoned, creating favorable conditions for wild boars to reproduce rapidly. They freely roam the streets and often rush like crazy into vehicles, causing accidents and damaging cars. Wild boars also cause traffic congestion, create chaos in the neighborhood, and do not hesitate to attack police officers. To control the situation, these people often use nets and screens to capture wild boars and in some cases, they are successful in doing so. Not only that, wild boars also destroy crops, causing great economic loss to farmers. Faced with the serious problems that wild boars have caused, Japanese farmers are applying many measures to deal with wild boars such as traps, guns, and hunting dogs. Wild boar foot trapping is an effective method to control wild boar numbers. This type of trap uses a strong metal clip to grip the boar's leg when they step on the bait. Strong clamping force will cause wild boars to be injured and unable to move, making it easier for trappers to approach and handle. Special traps called wild boar nose traps are used to control the wild boar population. This type of trap uses a wire or steel cable attached to a sharp metal bar. When the wild boar steps on the rope, the metal bar will pierce the pig's nose, causing injury and panic.
In Japan, some farmers use hunting rifles to kill wild boars, especially when the pigs cause damage to farms or agricultural lands. The presence of wild boars can cause many problems such as destroying land, destroying crops, and threatening human safety. However, the use of guns to hunt wild boars must comply with legal and safety regulations, ensuring that the killing of pigs takes place effectively and at the same time does not pose a danger to people and other livestock. Hunting dogs have become indispensable companions in hunting wild boars. With the ability to detect scent and flexibility, they easily move in the jungle, following the trail of hard to find prey. As the hunters entered cautiously, dogs led the way, their barks signaling the arrival of wild boar ahead. With cooperation and natural hunting skills, the bond between human and hunting dog grows stronger, creating an exhilarating hunting experience. The use of cage traps to catch pigs in Japan is a popular method that has been used for a long time. Cage traps are usually made from natural materials such as bamboo, wood or steel, and are designed to automatically close when the pig enters. When prey is caught in the trap, it activates a door mechanism that closes itself, keeping the pig in the trap until the hunter returns to collect it. This method is considered effective and does not cause damage or pain to the animal and helps people control the number of wild pigs in a sustainable way. In addition, they also plant unattractive plants for wild boars and surround the fields with nets to prevent their entry. Some other potential solutions include sterilizing wild boars, relocating them to safe areas and increasing people's awareness of how to prevent wild boars. And encourage everyone to participate in control efforts so they can share information about how to take safe and effective measures to protect food sources and habitats. Please share your opinion below in the comment section or comment on the video if you consider wild boars to be a threat to people. If you disagree, leave a zero in the comment section. Do you know about the Formosan squirrel? If so, please leave number two in the comment section. Formosan squirrels, also known as Taiwanese squirrels, are exotic animals that cause a lot of damage to the Japanese ecosystem. They were introduced to Japan in the early 20th century and are now proliferating in many areas, especially in Kamakura City. Formosan squirrels are omnivores. They can consume a variety of foods, from seeds, fruits, insects to even tree bark. The diversity of their diet impacts native animals, causing fierce competition for food. This not only affects the survival of native animals, but also causes significant damage to people's crops and gardens. Formosan squirrels are one of the main causes of the population. Decline of Japan's native bird species, they eat eggs and young birds, making it difficult for these birds to reproduce and develop.
Formosan squirrels can carry pathogens, endangering the health of humans and other animals. Some diseases carried by Formosan squirrels include rabies, scabies, and Powassan virus disease. The Japanese government has implemented many measures to control the Formosan squirrel population. In particular, hunting is considered the most effective measure to reduce the number of Formosan squirrels. The Mainichi newspaper reported that local authorities in 2000 launched a plan to capture and destroy squirrels. Still, squirrel numbers continue to increase, reaching an estimated high of 1,571 squirrels in 2018. Officials say that number will soon be surpassed this year, with 1,533 squirrels caught in just eight months. First month of 2023. In addition, they also use traps to capture Formosan squirrels alive and relocate them to other areas, helping to limit the spread of this animal. The local government of Kamakura has proposed additional budget allocations to fund a campaign against the squirrel species. including providing local residents with trap cages and posting signs requesting tourists not to feed animals. Squirrel meat is a unique and nutritious dish, loved for its delicious taste and high nutritional value. With its light pink color and soft texture, Squirrel meat is not only rich in protein, but also contains many important vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin B12, B6, potassium and iron. In particular, squirrel meat is low in fat and cholesterol, making it an ideal choice for people who want to maintain a healthy diet or have heart health problems. Have you ever tried this squirrel meat dish? Please share your opinion in the comments section below. Bear hunting in Japan is a traditional and strictly regulated activity, with the hunting season defined from November to February of the following year. However, the specific time may vary depending on the locality and bear species. To participate in this activity, hunters must have a valid license issued by local authorities. Bear hunting in Japan is not just a sporting activity, but also part of the country's long-standing culture and tradition. However, it is also a challenging activity and requires careful preparation along with strict adherence to safety regulations. Rifles, bows and spears are common tools that hunters use to hunt bears in Japan. Rifles are often popular because of their long-range shooting ability and high accuracy. Bows and arrows are used in areas with complex terrain, while spears are suitable for deep forest areas. Hunting and waiting are the two main methods favored by hunters. Hunting requires tracking bears, using traces such as footprints and droppings to find their location. 
Hunters then proceed to shoot bears when they are discovered. Meanwhile, standby hunters often place bait in places, where bears often appear and wait for them to approach the bait before making a shot. This method requires patience and skill to choose the most effective location and approach. However, it should be noted that this activity is not without risks and compliance with safety regulations is very important. This includes wearing protective gear, staying in contact for help, and not hunting alone. Compliance with these regulations not only protects hunters but also keeps hunting in a safe and responsible environment. Meanwhile. The debate over bear hunting continues, but this diverse perspective is part of a broader scrutiny of striking a balance between environmental conservation and human needs. Bear hunting in Japan is not just about catching prey, but also about respecting and protecting the natural environment. The Green Anali Lizard also known as the Carolina lizard, is becoming a worrying problem in Japan's ecosystem. This lizard species, introduced to the country in the early 20th century, is spreading and multiplying in many areas across the country. Their uncontrolled increase is creating a new challenge in protecting Japan's biodiversity. The Green Anali Lizard an exotic animal, has become a threat to Japan's ecosystem. This lizard, being a carnivore, consumes a large number of insects, including those that are beneficial to the ecosystem. <coughs> Competition between green and ollie lizards and native lizards, especially tokay lizards, is fierce over food and habitat. Eliminating green anali lizard habitat by eradicating areas with lots of trees and bushes, where they often seek refuge and live, can help reduce the spread of this species. By eliminating habitat sites, we can reduce the opportunity for green anali lizards to expand their territory and harm native species. Using traps to control green anali lizard populations is another effective method. Traps can be placed in spots where they commonly appear and use attractive materials or food to attract them into the trap. In this way, we can effectively reduce the number of green anali lizards in the area and limit the uncontrolled growth of this species. In Japan, the problem of alien monkeys is emerging as a significant challenge, according to Ms. Yamazaki, a resident of Chiba Prefecture, east of Tokyo. The area near her home is facing an increasing number of these monkeys. These monkeys often escape from zoos or wildlife parks, then interbreed with local monkey populations, causing genetic and behavioral variation in local monkeys. The consequences of this crossbreeding can cause many negative problems, 
The first is biodiversity loss. As hybrid monkey populations compete with native monkey species, leading to a decline in their numbers. The second is a change in monkey behavior. As some hybrid monkeys may carry aggressive or destructive genes from other alien monkey species, posing a danger to humans and property. Finally, imbalances in local ecosystems may also occur as changes in the monkey's genetics and behavior may affect the relationships between them and other flora and fauna. To solve this problem, measures should be taken to control and prevent monkey escapes by increasing security at zoos and wildlife parks, and control the number of hybrid monkeys by capturing and relocating them from native monkey habitats. Everyone needs to raise community awareness about the harmful effects of hybrid monkeys and how to prevent them. The hybrid monkey problem is a serious problem that needs to be carefully considered and resolved to protect local ecosystems and biodiversity. Research and control measures are being deployed to deal with this situation and community cooperation is key in this process. Let's contribute together to protect the ecosystem by solving the hybrid monkey problem. Moving on to another topic, let's explore frog farms in Vietnam to discover the process of transforming frog eggs into delicious frog legs for the dinner table. The mating process involves injecting female and male frogs with an aphrodisiac to stimulate mating. They are then released into separate tanks that have been prepared for mating and egg laying. Frogs begin the mating process by emitting unique sounds to attract partner frogs. The male grasps the female from behind in a mating position, releasing sperm as the female lays the eggs. On average, it takes one to three weeks for frog eggs to hatch into larvae, water animals with gills. Through metamorphosis, the larvae become young frogs, also known as young frogs or frog larvae, with lungs, legs, and a shape similar to adult frogs. It 
In the frog farming process, farmers must separate young frogs into different tanks or areas to manage growth, monitor health, prevent overcrowding, and provide optimal conditions for growth, Periodic cleaning of the tank or equipment surface to prevent algae or bacteria buildup is common. Commercial frog foods often use high-quality ingredients to ensure optimal nutrition. These ingredients may include fish balls, soybeans, grains, vitamins, minerals, and other additives necessary for the frog's health and growth. The pellets are designed to float on water, making them easily accessible to both live and semi-live frogs. Harvesting frogs usually occurs when they reach the desired size or stage of development. Frogs are caught and placed in mesh bags, each bag containing about 15 to 20 kilograms of frogs. Let's follow the process of catching frogs and the satisfaction of farmers during the harvest process. Besides Vietnam, frogs are also raised in France, Indonesia, Thailand, America, and especially China. In the United States, Frogs are raised on a small scale and are often used for research purposes. Frog bags are way before being transported to the market or processing plant. Their plant frogs are killed, skinned, and their legs cut off. Once the legs were collected, 
They were washed and immersed in a cold water bath at 7 degrees Celsius to remove any remaining blood. The frog's legs are then trimmed with scissors to remove remaining skin organs and blood stains. After washing, the frog legs are transferred to the freezing line. They are arranged in layers, not overlapping each other. The temperature of frog legs after freezing needs to reach minus 8 degrees Celsius. Finally, the frog legs are packaged according to the weight required by the customer. Hello friends! We continue our fascinating journey to destroy millions of invasive feral hogs for American farmers. If you are interested in this journey, leave a number in the comments below so I know you are with us until the end of the video. <laughs> In the kingdom of American wildlife, wild boars stand out not only with their impressive size, but also with their ferocious appearance. With a length of 1.2 to 2.1 meters and a shoulder height of 60 to 95 centimeter, they belong to the large-sized animal category. Their strong body can weigh more than 300 kilogram, depending on the habitat and nutritional source. The wild boar's thick, coarse hair helps it defend itself strongly and effectively, while fur colors ranging from brown to black in mixed shades create variety and richness. In particular, they are omnivores capable of consuming a variety of foods such as seeds, fruits, grass, and even small animals. Their nature marks preparation for the upcoming new season. Farmers and hunters often work together to locate and destroy wild boar dens, minimizing disruption and damage to the environment. However, Completely eliminating wild boars poses a difficult challenge, as they are stealthy and move cunningly, making hunting more difficult.
Hunters often choose the largest animals with the softest and sweetest meat to provide meals for their families, thereby helping to reduce food costs. However, in the context of food scarcity becoming increasingly serious, wild boars have become a major threat to agricultural culture. Every day, they roam across fields, destroying crops and causing significant damage to farmers. The appearance of Sounders wild boars is becoming increasingly worrying, making the need to control and destroy them more urgent than ever. More than just a food security issue, the spread of feral swine disease in the United States is becoming an increasingly serious threat to community survival. Their invasion causes significant impacts on the agricultural environment and food supply. Sounders often appear in many different areas, from forests to fields, where they forage and live. Although seemingly harmless, their behavior can cause significant damage to biodiversity and natural landscape structure. The destruction of agricultural areas and crops also has significant consequences, affecting food supplies and local economies. Damage to the agricultural sector especially in rural areas. The spread of wild boar is a major challenge to environmental protection and the stability of rural communities. The rapid reproduction rate of wild boars is posing a threat not only to the food supply for local animals, but also causing unnecessary competition in natural ecosystems. In the future, controlling and managing wild boars will be a big challenge for communities and local authorities. Cooperation and effective measures to protect the environment and ensure food security in the fight against wild boar invasion have become an important strategy. Not only is it a long-standing hunting tradition, but it is also a powerful means of controlling their populations. Hunting feral hogs not only provides a food source but also reduces pressure on human food sources and habitat in the United States. This is not only a recreational activity, but also a major measure to control their unchecked growth. The spread of wild boars not only causes enormous damage to the agricultural industry, but also risks spreading diseases to both humans and livestock. In the fight against the spread of feral swine in Texas, communities have proactively conducted research and implemented unique trapping methods to prevent this situation. Instead of applying rigid and dangerous measures, they have focused on innovation to create simple but effective traps.
These methods often use simple techniques with only thin nets and five to eight surrounding stakes to secure the net. At the same time, they also preserve the natural landscape and ensure safety for both humans and animals. Although it may not be known, wild boars are actually passionate about wheat and corn. This hobby not only causes hardship for farmers, but also creates significant negative impacts on the food supply. As such, the application of smart and effective control measures is necessary to keep Texas environment and economy from being severely impacted by feral swine infestations. This behavior not only creates intense competition between humans and wildlife in the agricultural industry, but also brings risks to the sustainable development of this industry. Wild boars are not only unwelcome guests in the fields, but they also like to invade and occupy human living spaces. The problem does not stop at causing economic damage, but also threatens human safety and peace. Furthermore, the wild boar community is also a mobile source of infection, capable of transmitting diseases to other animals, causing many risks to the health of livestock and poultry. Therefore, controlling and managing wild boars is not only an urgent priority to protect the economy, but also to ensure the health and safety of the community. This requires cooperation and effective measures from both communities and local authorities to deal with this challenge successfully and sustainably. The damage that wild boar herds cause to the agricultural industry is a serious problem. Estimated at up to 2.5 billion USD annually, this figure not only reflects a significant loss in agricultural production, but also has a profound impact on the region's economy. The destruction of wild boars not only directly affects crops such as corn and wheat, but also poses a major challenge to livestock production and veterinary systems. This requires the farming community to adopt effective management measures to control the situation and minimize losses. A new method has been implemented, which is to use steel cages to catch wild boars. When the pigs enter the prepared area with the cage, the system automatically activates and deploys the net to trap them. This method is considered a simple, effective solution in controlling wild boar populations and minimizing their negative impact on communities. However, the environment and community to successfully deploy this method require professionalism and careful management. The team needs in-depth training on how to use the cage safely and effectively. An inspection is required. Regular inspection and maintenance to ensure the cage operates correctly and is not damaged. Not dangerous to animals or humans. On a vast river in a vast land, millions of giant buffaloes are becoming a significant challenge for farmers and the global agricultural cultural community.
Their strong presence not only opens up new opportunities for food and resources, but also poses significant challenges in terms of environmental impact and the agricultural sector. Millions of giant buffaloes are creating significant pressures on farmers in the U.S. and around the world. They compete with other livestock for food consumption and grazing, causing land loss and affecting the environment. Their sudden appearance also increases the risk of traffic accidents and causes economic losses for farmers. Every day, American farmers face difficult challenges in protecting traditional resources. To deal with this problem, they need innovation and efficiency in resource management. Global buffalo populations are growing and expanding, creating significant challenges for the environment and farming communities. This growth affects the agricultural sector and causes biodiversity loss complicating management. The buffalo problem is not just a local challenge, but requires global cooperation and support. Solutions to protect the environment and maintain balance between humans and nature are not only the responsibility of local communities, but also the task of the whole world. Collaborative measures and effective management policies are needed to address this problem and ensure the sustainability of our precious resources. To deal with the invasion of wild buffalo, American farmers have implemented a buffalo hunting strategy. This is not only a technical task, but also an adventurous challenge. Hunters must prepare meticulously. From choosing the right equipment to mastering hunting techniques, once a target is identified, accuracy and patience are important when waiting for the ideal moment to shoot. This requires concentration and patience, along with professional skills to ensure an effective and safe hunting process. This approach requires discipline and meticulousness, but also offers a great opportunity to control the situation and protect agriculture from encroaching buffalo. Are you interested in this approach? Please share your opinion in the comments section. If you like, leave the number 2. Otherwise, leave the number 0. In addition to using rifles, some American farmers chose to hunt buffalo with bows and arrows. This requires precision and technique, including carefully selecting the right bow and arrow before starting. They must prepare meticulously and identify the buffalo's weaknesses to optimize their chances of winning. Using bows and arrows is not only a way to control buffalo herds, but also an interesting experience. Challenging accuracy and dexterity in hunting. 
Let's learn a little about the Cape Buffalo, a common African species that exists in countries such as South Africa, Uganda, Kenya, and others. It is worth noting that they do not occur naturally in the United States. Their appearance here is a mysterious phenomenon and creates a feeling of fear. Do you have any information about why they appeared in the United States? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. In the fierce battle between hunters and bison, hunters equipped with professional tools and meticulous preparation are closely monitoring every move of the bison herd. However, not every encounter with a herd of bison is an easy challenge with the large herd moving quickly. They are formidable opponents. Ultimate Showdown is a story about human perseverance and courage. The hunters' victory with their clever and decisive tactics over bison's powerful. Indomitable bison posed a problem that needed to be solved. Do you know the current situation millions of bison are in? A significant challenge for both American farmers and the international community is the rapid increase in bison populations, which is causing significant negative impacts on food sources, soils, and the agricultural environment. This increase is the result of a variety of factors, including the natural growth of bison herds, which has led to their increasing presence near residential areas and agricultural lands. This creates obvious security and safety issues as they affect pasture and the food of other livestock, causing competition for food within the ecosystem. Disturbance caused by bison herds on land can lead to damage to soil structure and decrease the quality of the agricultural environment, as well as cause security and safety problems for residential areas. To solve the problem, American farmers took it upon themselves to engage in hunting activities. This choice to use bows and arrows is not only a preventative measure, but also demonstrates the determination of the farming community to protect resources and ensure safety for both the community and agricultural land. Standardization meticulousness and archery skills were manifestations of diligence and perseverance in facing the challenges posed by the bison herds. 
some people also chose to domesticate bison for economic purposes. Domestication focuses on selecting important traits such as adaptability to farming environments, reproduction, and meat quality through selection of bison herds. To achieve this, they need extensive knowledge of genetics and quality control techniques. The domestication process required flexibility in combining an understanding of genetics and the ability to evaluate and improve the quality of bison herds. This helps improve productivity and efficiency in managing and caring for them, while also creating business opportunities and sustainable development in the agricultural industry. Bison are an extremely rich source of nutrients, containing essential nutrients such as protein, zinc, vitamin B12, and selenium. These substances not only promote muscle growth, but also provide health for the entire body. From the immune system to skin and hair health, in particular, the saturated fat content in bison meat is lower than regular beef, making it a great choice for meals. If you care about your heart health and want to enjoy a delicious bison meat dish, then nothing can stop you from discovering its wonderful taste. For food and health enthusiasts, enjoying a nutritious meal from bison meat will be an unforgettable experience. With the number of kangaroos increasing, farmers in Australia could not sit still and they chose to use hunting as a way to solve this problem. The Australian government has implemented policies that allow farmers to engage in hunting activities, provided they have a valid license. This measure not only helps control the number of kangaroos, but also maintains the balance between ecology and agriculture. It helps reduce pressure from kangaroo populations that cause negative effects on the environment and agriculture. However, the number of kangaroos not only increases but also poses a series of problems, especially when they invade and attack humans. This behavior not only increases the risk of accidents but also creates even more dangerous situations, such as competition between kangaroos and native animals, causing significant damage to natural ecosystems. Grazing by kangaroos can cause disruption in plant systems and affect the feeding habits of many other species. One animal that can control kangaroos is the dingo dog. 
their boldness and agility, coupled with their hunting abilities, make them proficient hunters when faced with the ferocity and sophisticated hunting skills of kangaroos. Dingoes often have to run away to protect themselves from the pursuit of kangaroos. Kangaroos are famous as an Australian cultural symbol. But why are they hunted and controlled? The sudden increase in the kangaroo population, now estimated at 42.7 million, almost double Australia's population, has posed major challenges. The Australian government has allowed farmers to hunt kangaroos to maintain natural balance and control the population. This is necessary to ensure kangaroo populations do not exceed sustainable levels, impacting landscapes and habitats, while also providing a sustainable source of meat for communities. Kangaroo meat is an extremely attractive and unique resource. Since 1959, kangaroo meat has become an important source of protein for Australians. With high protein content and only about 2% fat, kangaroo meat is considered a nutritious and healthy choice. In addition to being a food source for local people, kangaroo meat is also exported to many other countries, creating important economic opportunities for Australia. The use of kangaroo meat not only ensures a steady supply of protein, but also helps maintain the natural balance by controlling the kangaroo population in recent years. Hello! Have you ever been curious about how farmers handle wild boar meat after hunting? Let's explore this journey together! Don't hesitate to leave the number one in the comments if you want to join us! The one who makes the sounds of the wild. The pigs are currently running away from the hunters. So what did they do to deserve being chased like that? Do you know? In America, encountering wild boars wandering along the roadside is quite common. They often appear suddenly in crowded cities, as if their surroundings were their natural habitat. This behavior poses numerous challenges to the surrounding environment. So what is the reason behind the destructive actions of wild boars? Let's follow along to the end of the video to learn that many believe the intrusion of wild boars may stem from their struggles in finding food, forcing them to invade urban areas in search of sustenance. Loss of natural habitat may result from deforestation, climate change, or human intervention, which has prompted them to seek food in urban areas. Their adaptation to this new environment is often attributed to the availability and accessibility of food in urban areas, driven by their survival needs. What do you think? 
Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Of course, farmers cannot allow the sounder wild boar invasion to continue without taking action. They use traps to catch this sounder wild boar. However, what is worth noting here is that after wild boars were caught in traps, farmers used guns to destroy them. This raises questions about the purpose of this action by farmers. Some people choose to participate directly in the sounder boar hunt, not only for the task but also for the adventure and excitement it brings. They prepare meticulously with the right equipment and weapons and practice their skills to deal with unexpected situations in the wild. This is not just about killing wild boars, but also an opportunity to explore the beauty of wild nature and experience the excitement and tension of chasing prey in harsh environments. Do you like the way Americans handle this? If you like it, 